Hey folks, how are you doing? Welcome to another bikepacking adventure. I'm here in my home county of Lincolnshire. So it's a bit of an overnight to head in towards Market Basin. And uh, I stole the idea from Tony, who we did with a few weeks back. He said, wouldn't it be great if we could camp in Willingham Woods? Great idea. So I'm hoping to make it before dark. Might be tricky though, because this ride started off a bit haphazardly. Now I've got to bring my gilet, which had a power pack in the back and a few other things. So I had to go back for it. So this ride is 10% longer than planned. I've blown an hour, so it might, uh, might be after dark. Just makes it a little bit tricky sometimes, finding a spot to wild camp in. I'm heading along the River Trent here at East Ferry right now and it's been a headwind all the way down. Heavy bike, also I've switched across to uh, some winter tyres. So these are 32 millimetre ones, so a bit wider as well. And these ones are from Continental, the gate hard shells. So they've got a reasonably high rolling resistance, but not the worst in the world. So I've got slow tyres on, lots of wind, lots of gear. Getting all my excuses to be being very slow today. <laughs> and this is my packing system as well. It's the outkit for Fiana. I've got a small dry bag in there. That's a carry more. Rain jacket from InBike because it's going to be raining tomorrow. So I don't want to get filthy wet. Rock Brothers top shoe bag. Tent pegs, pedal lead, water bottles in Victoria. Uh, I never know what to call these. Bottle tool box. <laughs> I don't know what to call those. Uh, a race strap, race aero bag. Dangled hanging off these uh, Chinese aero bars. Garmin 530 plus. <coughs> Cheap belt. Samsung phone. Tucked underneath here for later on when I want to go to camp. Just got a really useful uh, musette. And I think that's about it really. Hopefully I've not forgotten anything. Oh, I'm a bit different on here as well. I've got uh, one of, I've got a third inner tube just lassoed on there with kind of a, well, a Velcro strap really. These ones are from Polaris Bikeway. So, right, let's get back on the bike, heading towards Gainsborough, Lincoln, and a few roads less travelled. In fact, that's what I might call the name of this video. Because when I want to put the route together, I've chosen roads that I've never even never travelled before, or very li little travelled, very less travelled. So I'm trying to fill that heat map up, turn the map as purple as possibly can really, because even though you know I've done lots in Lincolnshire, it's always somewhere new to ride your bike, so that's what I'm doing today. Thing, well, I forgot to mention, that before slow me down, is gearing. It's the first time, well, it'll be the first autumn and winter, we're riding on a what's essentially a gravel bike sort of gearing setup. Got absolute black oval chain rings. Now, don't quote me, I think the 46 30 might be wrong, and on the back it's a 50 34, it's the biggest we'll go. So, lots, so I've lost a lot of top speed. But it means I can spin up those big hills and things and mountains, of which there were none today. <laughs> well, tell a lie, there's some hills coming up. I'm heading towards the Lincoln Edge. I'm going to be zigzagging up it a few times on this section of the route. As you can see, I've never been on those roads, so I'm going to colour that in as well. So I'm just heading towards the, the Lincoln Edge now. And one of the descents is at the Burton Road traffic lights. I've always wanted to go that way, for no particular reason, just want to find out where it leads.
So um, just on the B1398 having just gone up the Hartwell climb about a mile in that direction. So I'm starting the corner of Glentwell, Glentworth even. Just about to head down this first hill. And it's quite leafy, but not dramatically slow. As you can see, it's pretty good, pretty good view. Maybe about 40 meters down there. Not extreme, but uh, yeah, a hill nonetheless. And uh, this is, as I've looked around as well off the main road, there's quite a few areas of woodland where you could probably set up a tent quite easily. Of course, it's, it's off a, well, it's a B road. It's not too busy B road. That the traffic's not the main thing. Um, well, we're talking about this time of year, if you want a wild camp, this time of year particularly is, the leaves are falling, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> And they make a huge difference to, to, your, to the stealthiness of setting a wild cap up in the woods. Particularly if you're just off, off a road somewhere. So you need to get pretty far in not to get seen. So just bear that in mind if you're fancy going wild camping this autumn or winter. Little horses. And this is a West Common. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I've lived here all my life, but still worth a visit. So now I'm going to be heading towards Meveringham, and it tell you what, this wind has been very, 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 very difficult. <laughs> So we're heading towards Meveringham Heath Lane, 6.2 kilometres and uh, still going south. But look, hedges. Someone bikes hedges. Thanks Farmer Giles. Sign there for Martin Moore. Anyway, I've just turned off the left. I don't know if you can see the sign from this angle. Blankley Fen. I think it's the most southerly and westerly point of this ride. Which is just as well, because I've been taking a battery all day. I really need a tailwind right now. Oh. So I'm headed over to uh, Woodall Spa, crossing over at the Kirkstead Bridge and then might wind my way up onto the walls a little bit I realise I jumped to sort of uh, some distance there but there's a back road into uh, Middle Raisin and then finally into Market Raisin we stop at the co-op get some food for camp Roads less travelled come through the woods Wood Horse Bar and this is the, uh, the famous kinema in the woods. I call it famous. It's very unique. It still has int intermissions and home of the mighty Crompton organ. So I guess sometimes you'll be watching a film and someone will get on the piano and start playing a tune. I tell you, if you took the woods out of Wardour Spa, the heart of the, ta <laughs> heart of the town would uh, die. It's amazing what a difference woods can make to a place. It needs to be more woodland over the UK, isn't it? It's just a shame it's all been torn down over the years. I've uh, often described Woodall Spa as a place to come to die. It's full of older people. I wonder if I could be in there one day. 
<laughs> set up the tent. I bet I called her. Yeah, I'll have to add it to my to-do list. So it's never really occurred to me before. So this is the community centre, the Jubilee Park. They do do trial off on from there, they have in the past over years. And it's, uh, yes, they do try off on because it's actually got an outdoor swimming pool. Last hour, coming to five o'clock. The uh, sun's going to be down before six o'clock. Oh dear. Of course, next weekend, the clocks fall backwards, don't they? But the upside is, I might feel a little bit more motivated to cycle to work in the mornings because uh, suddenly it won't be so dark getting up in the morning at least for a few more weeks longer and uh, get back into that cycle commute which slips out of the habit for a little while so I believed earlier I was going to talk about goals goal for next year uh, kind of one goal I've definitely decided upon or two want to finish Paris Brest Paris and I want to finish it faster than the year before so that's one goal or is that two I don't know but the goal I wanted to mention is Audax itself um, I have to go back to 2019 pre-covid uh, when I last got over 100 points doing Audax rides and things so in 2023, I want to at least hit 100 points. That's my goal for next year. As for this year, after I finish this ride, I would have got 73 points. That's not too bad, is it? Um, I didn't get any points for the transcontinental stuff. Sensibly, I did not put any DIYs in anything like that. Uh, same with the US round Netherlands so if I had done I'd probably well have exceeded 100 points but I think I think I would have been daft to do that kind of thing or rather I think you know by doing that I would have put a lot of undue pressure on myself talking of the TCR I've been working a lot on redoing the video more less of a vlog style just kind of a, a film one video a lot more effort in, put into it nice cinematics a bit of music coming it from a different angle really hope you enjoy that when it comes out soon not sure when that'll be i keep putting the final touches on it that i i keep coming up with other ideas and things too far through Rugby now the main road between Rugby and Bardney same main road it's just a fairly quiet B road really so this is the Bardney Davies just going past the entrance I remember years and years ago it's kind of a little bit of training ground when I used to work in Horncastle I'd often go early in the morning head out before work and just cycle and discover places that I've never been to before just taking the sign for Langton, Langton upon Rugby another road less travelled or never travelled by me I keep showing you the trees a lot throughout this video and I'm sure you agree it's one of the most uh, beautiful times of year Seeing all those leaves change on the trees. In many ways, this is also a pain in the ass, isn't it? <laughs> Especially those fawns. Wow, what a beautiful skyline that is. Really is pretty. So this is Hainton. Coming off the walls over there is a little London. I tell you what, I was just thinking about tomorrow in this group ride and stuff. I don't think a lot of people are going to show up, you know. I think they're going to get be put off by the rain. Fingers crossed, somebody will turn up. Otherwise, 
I'll be booked for another week, I think. Good morning, hopefully pictures are okay. As you can see, we've arrived at camp here in, uh, I think it's Dog Kennel Wood, I think it's called, opposite to Willingham Woods. Um, I got arrived at Willingham Woods itself and there was a, a young couple, shall we say, in the car park and oh, some lads running around or something. So I was like, not going there. I've been in this woods here and I must say, I didn't, I didn't really get a lot of sleep, to be honest. So much noise going on. Very noisy wood, <laughs> very old, everything was creaking all the time, so yeah, didn't sleep much at all to be fair. Anyway, I thought I'd quickly show you, can't be because I need to wrap this video up, don't I? I need to say goodbye. Before I do, as you see, it's a nature hike tent, this one's called the Monga 2. Uh, needs a bit of a wash actually, starting to get a few marks on it. Uh, yeah, it's a one stroke two person tent. I've had it since, oh, I can't remember now. Was it last year? Early last year? June last year? Or June the year before? I can't remember, but I've had it a long time and it's always uh, looked after me and kept me dry. It's really spacious inside, always been quite happy. And of course, this is the beast that's going to get everything loaded back onto it. So I'm going to be going to do the group ride now. And I think there's at least three of us. There's definitely one other, Tom Stringer. Uh, I'll drop a link to his channel in the corner of the screen. He's uh, he's he'll be doing some vlogging today, and Chris Skellhorn is likely to be here as well. So it could be at least three of us. So I'm not going to be riding by myself. And hopefully, if Chris is coming to his car, which he may or may not do, he might drive from Grimsby. Uh, I'll I'll better dump some stuff on him in his car. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Anyway, so um hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Got your questions, comments, stick them down below. And of course, if you love the channel, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>